All right, if you're anything like me and you want to try out a new Linux distribution, uh, what you do is you get one of these little USB here, plug it into your computer, open up a program like Etcher, Popsicle, Rufus, and go ahead and flash the ISO directly to the USB. Now, what if I told you we are completely wasting our time? What I have here is a USB I created. This is a multi-boot USB drive that has 10 different operating systems on it, including Windows 10 and a bunch of my favorite Linux distributions. So what I'm gonna do in this video is show you how to make the ultimate bootable multi-ISO USB drive. But first, but first, I would like to thank our sponsor, Skillshare. So if you don't know by now, Skillshare is a vast online learning community with thousands of different classes where you can explore new skills, strengthen skills that you already have, whether if that's video editing, animation, web development, just about anything. I've been using Skillshare for a while and you, you'll notice this more in my camera quality. I've been using it a lot to really learn how to use this camera and do things like color grading. If you've been watching my channel, you know that my old shots used to look something like this or this, while now they're starting to look a little bit better. Now, one class I recently started joining in on is the MKBHD series of videos on scripting, shooting, and editing videos for YouTube. So with some of these newfound skills, you may notice me implementing improvements, upgrades, and changes in how I shoot these YouTube videos going forward. Now, if you're interested, down in the description, there is a link to Skillshare. If you use that link, the first thousand people that do will get a free one month trial of Skillshare. So go ahead, click that link, try it out. Now, creating this USB, the ultimate multi-boot USB, it's actually really easy to do. What we're gonna use is a tool called Ventoy. It is a free and open source USB bootable solution available for both Windows and Linux. I would recommend you go to this website and read through everything. You'll get a lot more in-depth detail of what exactly is going on here. And another thing I'd suggest you do is right here under tested ISO, this is all the different uh, Windows operating systems, Linux distributions, and everything else that is compatible with this. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over to the download page and we're doing this in Linux. So go ahead and click on the Ventoy Linux.tar.gz open this up and here we can download the Linux version right here. Additionally, if you go ahead and download the Windows one, if you're in Windows, open that up, you can see that it gives you an exe file. All you need to do in Windows is extract this folder and then in this directory, open up the exe and you're good to go. Linux process is a couple extra steps. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. We'll open the file and here is everything in Linux. So what we're gonna do is just extract this. We'll go ahead and throw this in our home directory just to keep it simple. Hit extract, close this out. And now if I go ahead and minimize our browser and open up Dolphin, let's go ahead and go to that home directory. And then you can see we have this Ventoy folder here. Just open that up and you have a lot going on here, but all you're really gonna want to do is open this directory in the terminal. One of the easiest ways to do this is just to right click and hit open terminal. And now you can see that we are already in the directory that we want to be in. If I hit LS, you could see that as the correct files. So from here, what we're gonna want to do is actually do a sudo sh and then type in the uh, ventoy web.sh, go ahead and hit enter type in your root or your sudo password. And now here it's gonna tell you to open your browser, visit this local IP address. You can copy and paste this or you can just hold down control and click. And we can see that this is our graphical user interface for this utility. I already have my USB plugged in. If you don't, now is a good time to go ahead and do that. Plug it in, you could click this little refresh button to rescan. You have your version number here and you have some other options and languages, but we're not gonna to get too far into that right now. Let's go ahead and install. So you just click install. It's gonna make sure that you want to format it because all the data currently on this USB drive will be lost. Now it really wants you to double check, so we're gonna hit okay. And it should take no time at all. It is now done. So from here, if we go ahead and open up our file explorer again, you'll see under removable devices, we have Ventoy. Now from here, you don't need to do any special flashing or anything like that. All we need to do is go ahead and grab some ISOs and drop it in here. 
So under my documents, I have all the ISOs that I want to go ahead and add to this multi-boot drive, including Endeavor, Fedora, OpenSUSE, Pop! OS, Seduction, Solus, and I have a Windows 10 ISO here. So I'm just going to go like this, right click, copy, go over to our Ventoy, right click, and paste. Now this might take a little bit of time because that's about 25 gigabytes worth of ISO files, but that's really all there is to it. If you need more detail or you want to uh, do secure boot properly or anything like that, go to the website and here you have some documentation, but if we actually go ahead and go on their GitHub page, here is where we can get a lot of information, including all the features. And then right here we have the installation instructions or install and update. So if I go over here, you can get a full in-depth guide of everything that's going on, including the four Windows instructions, the uh, Linux GUI mode, which is what we just did. If you prefer CLI, you could do this completely in the terminal. And there's a lot more stuff going on here, including some theme plugins, some menu extension plugins, and other things that you could go ahead and add to this. But basically, when your files are done copying over, you are ready to go ahead and plug this in and boot into the drive. And the whole dragging and dropping just the Windows ISO into this through Linux is awesome, because usually you have to use WO USB or some other special tool to be able to do that in Linux, so this makes it really easy. And another cool thing is, once you put those ISOs in, you don't need to flash it or anything like that. If you want to upgrade an ISO, so if... Uh, you have Ubuntu 20.04 and you want to put Ubuntu 22.04 when that comes out, you just delete the old and put in the new, drag and drop. It's really that easy. All right, so we are gonna be trying this out on this ThinkPad right here. Uh, we have our USB drive, so let's go ahead and plug this on into the computer, open it up, and turn her on. So for me, it's F12. All right, and I'm gonna to want to go ahead and select this first option here, which is the Kingston Data Traveler. For you, it will probably or may be different. And here is our Ventoy boot menu with all of the ISOs that we went ahead and added, including our Fedora, Endeavor OS, Manjaro Cutefish, and actually, let's just go ahead and jump into Manjaro Cutefish, just so you guys can kind of see this firing up a Linux distribution. Let's go with the open source drivers. All right, we can see it booting up here. And there we go, we are now in Manjaro Cutefish. So what I'm actually gonna do real quick is power this down and let's, let's boot into Windows real quick. And down here near the bottom, we have our Windows ISO. So let's go ahead and highlight that. Hit enter and we should be jumping into the Windows installation. All right, there's our Windows logo. And here we are, we could begin the Windows installation process if we wanted to, but I do not, so let's not do that. And in this Ventoy menu, not only can you select the ISO images that you went ahead and loaded up, but we have a couple other tools and options such as the local boot. If we hit F4, we have a tree view. If we hit F3, if we go ahead and hit F5, it will take us to some tools, including keyboard layouts, display configuration settings, and a couple other things. So there are some additional options in addition to the wonderful ISO booting functions. So overall, I am incredibly happy I found this tool. Uh, instead of having USBs everywhere, I'm just gonna have this one. I'm gonna keep all my ISOs on it. It's going to make my life easy. With all that said, again, I would like to thank our video sponsor, Skillshare. Once again, if you're interested in a one month free trial, first thousand people that click it down below, get that. And big thank you to our Patreon and YouTube members. I would like to thank Mitchell Valentino and Phil Mac. You guys are uh, producer level supporters over on Patreon. I added the producer level to YouTube if you guys or if anybody is interested in doing that. Additionally, thank the Techie and Techie Plus members. Your guys' support means the world. And with all that said, well, if you're interested in becoming a member, links down below or hit the join button. Uh, with all that said, have a beautiful day and goodbye.